نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذي نصطفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو الفضل الكبير بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح يا فتاح يا فتاح صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم الأمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, My dear brothers and sisters in Islam one of the most beautiful traditions that summarizes for us the philosophy of our religion when it comes to doing good deeds is a narration mentioned in the Sunan of At-Tirmidhi reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in which he said that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Badilu bil a'mali sabara hasten and rush to do good deeds hasten and rush to do good deeds before seven things might befall on you Badiru bil amal hasten and rush do not delay any good deed if a thought comes to pray if a thought comes to fast if a thought comes to give charity if you have an, any inclination to do any kind of good deed do not delay or else something might happen to come between you and that good deed and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam mentioned seven things he mentioned seven things in this in this hadith five of which occurs to every single one of us in our life one of which is a catastrophe of a global nature and one of which is the end of time so prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said badiru bil a'mali sab'a rush and hasten to do good deeds before one of these seven things might befall on you so what are those seven things number one he said hal tantaziruna illa faqran munsiya are you waiting to become so poor that you are not able to do anything except to earn your money what happens to all of us at times of crisis what happens to all of us especially at economic strife what happens we are so troubled and we are so concerned and we are so worried about how am i going to pay my rent how am i going to look after my family how am i am i going to feed my family how am i going to survive that our concentration in our salah goes down our concentration in our ibadah goes down it shouldn't but it does forget about the concentration we don't even remember about our ibadah because the only thing we remember or the only thing we concern and worry about is to earn our money so prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said what are you waiting for are you waiting until a catastrophe comes of an economic nature that will cause you to forget everything else except to earn your money is that what you're waiting for so that's number one Number two, he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Aw ghinam mutghiyya. Are you waiting for your wealth to become so much that your wealth will divert you away from the worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the problem too. Too little money or too much money? If you have too little money, then you are always eager to earn more money because you cannot live without that money. But the moment your money becomes more than what you need, surplus, you spend on this dunya. And the qanoon and the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when you start spending your money on this dunya, automatically your heart becomes hard. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is reminding us that how weak is the son of Adam? 
How weak is mankind? When he has money, he's preoccupied. When he doesn't have money, he's preoccupied. So forget about money. Why worry about money? You know, put your money aside and be continuous in the worshiping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be continuous in doing good deed. Whether you have high money or whether you have no money, because there will never be a time in your life when your money is absolutely perfect. You either have a lot of money or you don't have enough money. And we'll ask them to move the car. That's Kamran Bhai's car. Huh? Come That's Kamran Bhai's car. So there will never be a time when your money is perfect. You either have a lot of money or you don't have enough money. And in both situations, Shaitan will come to you and Shaitan will cause you to be diverted away from the worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing Prophet wasallam mentioned in that hadith is faqram munsiya, a poverty that will cause you to forget everything. And the second thing he mentioned is ghinam mutghiya, a richness that will cause you to be diverted away from the right path. The third thing that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith is Al-Maradan Mufsida. Are you waiting? Are you waiting for an illness that will debilitate you? Are you waiting that you become so sick that will cause you to be in your bed all the time and you won't be able to do anything else? You see all around you this pandemic. We are living in the era of pandemic and how this pandemic is spreading far and wide. For last 17 months, this pandemic has changed every single aspect of our life. Every single aspect of our life. So Prophet ﷺ is asking us, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting to be afflicted by this catastrophe? No, you cannot do that. You have to continue to do good deeds. Sickness, it comes and goes. Sickness comes and goes. But your good deeds need to continue. So the third thing Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith, he said, are you waiting for the sickness that will debilitate you, that will cause you to be in your bed all the time, and you won't be able to do anything else. The fourth thing Prophet ﷺ mentioned is, أَوْ هَرَمًا مُفْنِدَ أَوْ مُفَنِّدَ Both riwayat. أَوْ هَرَمًا مُفْنِدَ أَوْ مُفَنِّدَ Are you waiting for an old age that will, for, that will cause you to forget everything? An old age when you're going to be so weak, when you're going to be so infirm that you cannot live your life the way you wanted to live your life. So will you continue to delay? Will you continue to procrastinate? Tomorrow I will become a good person. When I reach 60, then I will start praying five times a day. When I reach 70, then I will go for Hajj. Then I will become a righteous person. Is that what you're waiting for? And to what level are you going to procrastinate? At to what age will you continue to delay? And what's the point? Even if you have a long life, even if you reach that old age, what is the guarantee that by, by the time you get to that age, you will no longer even have the energy, probably you won't even have the mental faculties to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. So Prophet ﷺ is asking us this, this simple question, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for an old age that causes you to become informed, that causes you to not act rationally, that causes you so that causes you to not to not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran the way He created us. He tells us that you begin in weakness. And then you, you begin, so you begin with weakness. You begin weak. And then, then you rose in your strength. But then after that strength, you shall go back to weakness. That's what he told us in the Quran, that I've created you from weakness. And after weakness, Allah says, After weakness, I gave you strength. But He said, after strength comes weakness again. That is how Allah created us. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us in the Quran, look at the cycle of your look at the look at the moon and look at the cycle of, of, of moon. And you know this is the cycle of your life. You start weak and you start small and you start flimsy and then you gain strength and you become strong. But once your strength reaches its pinnacle, 
then your descent will begin. And you will experience the same kind of descent that you experienced in the first part of your life. So Prophet ﷺ is asking us this question. Are you waiting for an old age? Do you think you are going to become suddenly righteous and religious at the age of 60, 70, 80? No, it's never going to happen. So if you want to do a good deed, do it right here, right now. So this is the fourth point that Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith. The fifth point he mentioned is that what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for our mawt and mujhiza? Are you waiting for an unexpected death? Mawt and mujhiza means a death that is unexpected. A death that is, that is sudden, that you didn't plan for. And these are five things that Prophet ﷺ mentioned in that hadith. These are five, thing that, five things that every single one of us shall experience in our life. The five things that are the cycles of our life. Number one, poverty. Number two, richness. Number three, sickness. Number four, old age. And number five, unexpected death. And every death is unexpected. Even the one who falls sick and is given life and is given time to live, even he doesn't know exactly when that time will come. But in particular, unexpected death in this hadith is a reference to those who are not even willing or prepared and they had no idea that that time is going to come so soon. You know when you are young, when you are in your teens, you know when you are in your early 20s or early 30s, you don't think you ever, you're ever, you're, you are ever going to die. And subhanAllah, every single day we receive a phone call or we receive the news that so and so pass away. My own friend, when I started working here in 2013, my own friend, my classmate, we did our hips together under the same teacher. He passed away in an accident, just like that. Completely unexpected, completely unknown. A young man, a young man, and it happens just like that. This is what we call mouth and mujiza, a mouth, a death that is sudden, that is unexpected. So Prophet is asking us this question, what are you waiting for? Why are you delaying? Why are you delaying that piety and that righteousness? Because shaitan comes to you and he says to you, tomorrow I will become a righteous person. Tomorrow I will become a good person. But what is tomorrow? Tomorrow never comes. It never comes. So Prophet ﷺ is reminding us this fifth thing in this hadith, that are you waiting for a sudden death? Because you can never ever be prepared for that sudden death. And then finally, the sixth thing that Prophet ﷺ reminded us, that should cause us to wake us from our slumber. He said, are you waiting for Abid Dajjal? Are you waiting for Dajjal? For Shaykh Ruha Ibn Yuntazur? And this is the most terrifying thing that you can wait for? You think when a global catastrophe comes, then you will wake up? It will be too late by then. You think when the Dajjal comes, then you are going to become righteous? Then you are going to become religious? Then you are going to become pious? SubhanAllah. He said, for sure, Ruha ibn Yuntada. This is the worst thing that you can wait for. So the sixth thing he's asked, the sixth thing he mentioned in the hadith, he said, are you waiting for a Dajjal? For sure, Ruha ibn Yuntada. And then finally, the seventh thing Prophet ﷺ mentioned, he said, Avisa'a, are you waiting for the day of judgment? Are you waiting for the day of judgment? It's the biggest catastrophe that you can wait for. It's the most bitter of all things that you can wait for. You're waiting for the day of judgment to come and then you will become righteous? And then you will become pious? So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is this beautiful hadith that Prophet ﷺ told us. And it is so eloquent. And it is so succinct. And it is, it is meant to shock each and every single one of us. It is meant to wake each and every single one of us from our slumber. And he said in this beautiful hadith, and the Arabic is so beautiful. He said, بَادِرُوا بِالْأَعْمَالِ صَبَعًا هَلْ تَنْتَظِرُونَ إِلَّا فَقْرًا مُنْسِيًّا أَوْ غُنًا مُطْغِيًّا أَوْ مَرَضًا مُفْسِدًا أَوْ مَوْتًا أَوْ, أو هَرَمًا مُفْنِدًا أَوْ مَوْتًا مُجْهِزًا أَبِ الدَّجَّالِ فَشَرُ غَائِبٍ يُنْتَظَرْ أَبِ السَّاعَةِ Beautiful, beautiful hadith. Seven things he mentioned, and he said that these seven things, each one of these things should cause you to have a shock in your factor. And listen to the beginning of this hadith. Badiru bil a'mal. Rush, hasten, do not delay your good deeds. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for one of these seven things to happen to you? Do you think that when these seven things come, then you are going to wake up? Subhanallah, it will be too late by then. If you want to do good deeds, do good deeds now. 
and be perpetual, be consistent in your good deeds before any of these seven things might happen to you. And subhanAllah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when are we going to wake up? We live through the era of pandemic. So many of these seven things we saw with our own eyes in front of us. Not just we saw, we are seeing every single day happening in front of our own eyes. Don't you see poverty? Don't you see sickness? Don't you see sin and death? All of these things are happening around us all the time. When are we going to wake up? It's too late to wait until tomorrow. And this beautiful hadith of Rasulullah is telling us that piety and religiosity and consistency in good deed is not something that you delay. It's something that you do right here and right now. And subhanAllah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I don't want to sound judgmental. And wallahi, whatever I say, it is for me first and then for anybody else. Whenever we go to the cemetery, whenever we bury our loved ones, I've seen it myself and I've experienced this myself, that as soon we bury our loved one and as soon as we jump back into our car, we forget about it. We forget about that qabr, we forget about that death, we forget about everything as this is not for me. I'm never ever gonna come to you. I'm never, I'm never ever going to come here. And this is the biggest shaitan that is killing you and that is killing me, that is killing our amal. That we somehow in our hearts, we are convinced that's never going to happen to me. I already have plans for tomorrow. I already have plans for my wedding. I already have plans for my children, which university I'm going to send them off, how I'm going to marry them off, how I'm going to get older, how I'm going to get my retirement, how I'm going to get my pension. We have already planned each and everything as if this is never going to happen. Planning is not a bad thing, but this shaitan inside me and you that is telling us over and over again that this is never going to happen, this is destroying our iman and destroying our amal. Wallahi, my dear brothers, in front of us in the last year, over the last 17 months, you have seen in front of you, children are passing away, teenagers are passing away, our elders are passing away, you tell me what is the guarantee? It's like a breath that you take in, you do not know the next breath is going to come out or not. You don't know. So in this beautiful hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us, Badiru bil amali sabha, go and hasten to do good deeds. Do not delay if you have any inclination, any good deed that you are able to do, just do it. Do not delay it. Otherwise, one of these seven things might happen to you. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Let's make this commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come to Jummah not so, we sit down and we listen to these beautiful hadith and you know spiritually it affects us but then practically speaking we don't bring them into our actions. And remember one thing and I always remind myself and I'm going to remind you the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the Quran that وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ uh, sorry, I can't remember the ayah exactly. But the ayah says that who can be more wrong than a person that in front of him Quran is being recited and he still decides to turn away from it. So we learn about these hadith in front of us. We mention these hadith, we remind each other about these hadith, but we still choose to turn away from them. Who can be more wrong than us? So let's make that commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's reaffirm our intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's have that lifestyle that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any opportunity that you, you see to do good deeds, inshallah, let's go and do it. And do not delay it before one of these seven things might happen to you. I will conclude with that one question somebody asked. Is that, you know, there are some hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that tell us that thinking and analyzing before taking action is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then there are other hadith that tell us that delaying and procrastination is from shaitan. So how do you reconcile between these two kind of a hadith? One set of hadith says, Ata'anni min Allah, that thinking calmly and then taking action is from Allah. Another set of hadith says that delaying and procrastination is from shaitan. So which one is it? Which, which hadith, which set of hadith should we take? And subhanAllah, our scholars made it very easier for us to understand these two different kinds of hadith. They say when it comes to good deeds, then you should not think twice. 
you should act hastily. When it comes to good deed, any opportunity that you see, you should rush to do it. You should not allow shaitan to plant any kind of doubts in your heart. You saw an opportunity to give charity, Bismillah, go and give charity. You saw an opportunity to go and meet a person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, visit a sick person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillah, go ahead and do it. You do not double guess yourself. You go ahead and do it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith said, Badiru, hasten. In the Quran, Allah says, Sabiqu, win the ways. In another place, Allah says, Sari'u, move quick, do it. Go ahead and do it, and do not delay it. So when it comes to good deeds, we do not double guess ourselves and we go ahead and do it. But when it comes to the issues of this world, when it comes to any major decision that is of a dunyavi nature, then hastiness is from shaitan. When it comes to any major decision of this dunya, then you should think and you should contemplate and you should ask people and you should do istikhara. Changing your careers, changing your job, moving into a new town, any kind of a decision that you need to make, do not be hasty. Ask people, think, do istikhara, and then after that, you'd make a decision. And that is the beauty of our religion. Hastiness is something that is from shaitan when it is with regards to this dunya. Because if you act emotionally, if you act spontaneously, if you do something rashly, then you're going to regret later on. So this is from shaitan. But when it comes to our deen, when it comes to doing good deeds, then hastiness is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know when you have a good idea, when you want to do something good, shaitan will come to you and he will give you 20 excuses to not do it. And the more you allow those excuses to stay in your head, the less the chances are for you to do that good deed. So when it comes to our good deed, and that's the beauty of our religion, when it comes to good deed, when it comes to our religion, do not procrastinate. Be hasty, rush and hasten to do good deeds. And this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to any major decision of this dunya, then do not be hasty. Do not act emotionally, do not act spontaneously, do not act rashly. Rather you take your time, you think, you contemplate, you ask the people who have expertise in that area, you make an istikhara, and then only after you have taken all of these measures, only after that you make a decision, and then that decision will also be the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I sincerely make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah allow all of us to understand this hadith that alhamdulillah we have learned today and Allah allow all of us to implement this hadith in our life and benefit from that hadith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. May Allah keep us united in this dunya and may Allah reunite us in the hereafter. Wa akhru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.